This is an Algebra 2 test review over complex numbers, quadratic formula, and transformation. Number one, simplify the following complex number. It's a cycle of fives. So what you're going to do is take 45, divide that by 4. That gives you 11.25. That's the same thing as 1 quarter, if you want to think of it like that, which is i to the first, which is the same thing as i. You can also type it onto your calculator, and what you have when you type it onto your calculator, you're going to go second i raised to the 45, as you see right there, and you're going to hit enter. Notice this part right here, think of it as zero, so your answer is i. You can do it like that as well, okay? Number two, same thing, take 10, 80, Divide that by 4, and that should give you 270.00, which is the same thing as i to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And that is a real number. <coughs> number 3. You continue to do the same thing. 1275 divide that by 4. That will give you... 318.75. Notice that's like 3 quarters, which is the same thing as i to the third, which is negative i, which is a pure imaginary number. On number 4, you're going to take the powers of 4, 5, 9, 8, divide that by 4 as well. And that is equal to 1149.50. Look at point 5. That's the same thing as i squared. i squared is the same thing as negative 1. Okay? On number 5 and 6, you need to make sure you look at the whole thing and realize if you are adding, subtracting, or multiplying. Parentheses are there. Make sure you know how to read them correctly. Let's look at number five. First set of parentheses. I can just get rid of that. It doesn't serve any purpose other than to set it apart. Bring down your five. That's an understood one. Make sure you distribute, and that comes out to be negative six plus four i. Okay? Combine your like terms. And when you combine your like terms, Remember, we wanted to write it in this format of A plus BI. That's the format you always want. Real c numbers comes first. Negative 5 minus 6 gives you negative 11. Negative 6I plus 4I gives you minus 2I. And there you have it. Okay. Number 6. Same thing. So take a look. Just because you have two sets of parentheses does not mean you multiply. Take a look at that first set. I'm not multiplying times anything, so I'm just going to rewrite it without the parentheses. Second one, this is a plus, so I'm just going to bring that down as well. Negative 8 plus 6i. Okay? Combine your like terms. Deal with your real numbers first. Negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. Negative 4i plus 6i is plus 2i. That is as simple as you can get number six. That is also a complex number. All right. Number seven. Take a look first, okay? Look through. Make sure you, you distribute. This right here, you make sure you distribute. So three times one is three. Three times i is negative three i. You got a negative right here. Make sure you distribute all that as well. Negative 1 times 1 is positive 1. Negative 1 times 8i is plus 8i. Combine your like terms. 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 3i plus 8i is plus 5i. It's as simple as you can get it. Okay. On number 8, look at your first one. There's nothing you can do there, so I'm going to bring that one down first. Make sure you look at the whole problem before you start. So you have negative 7 plus 6i. Okay? Distribute that 2. Please follow order of operation. Negative 2 times negative 5 is 
plus 10. Negative 2 plus 4i is minus 8i. Combine your like terms. Take care of your whole numbers first. Negative 7 plus 10 is 3. 6i minus 8i is minus 2i. You cannot simplify that anymore. And that's your final answer for number 8. Let's go to number 9. On number 9, I'm going to show you a box method. And you can do it by just distributing it or the box method. So on number 9, I'm going to do that first. Okay, That square means you got two of those. So I'm going to go ahead and write this twice. Negative 4 plus 5i times negative 4 plus 5i. Okay. So here's my box to help you if you want to use the box method. I'm going to divide that to 4. Negative 4 goes here, plus 5i goes there. Second group. Negative 4 goes here, plus 5i goes here. And now you are going to just distribute. Negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. Negative 4 times 5i is negative 20i. Negative 4 times that is also negative 20i. And 5 times 5 is 25i squared, okay? Keep in mind that whenever you have an i squared, you can go ahead and that's times negative 1, so 25 times negative 1 is negative 25. So let me write that out so you can see it better. So you have 16 minus 20i minus 20i minus 25. Combine your like terms. 16 minus 25 is negative 9. Add your two like terms, so you have negative 40i. Let's look at number 10. Number 10, you can distribute the 2i first, or you can do the 4 right here. Your choice, okay? Whatever method you choose is fine. I'm going to bring this down and take care of this part first. So I have 2i, then I'm going to FOIL. 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 4i is negative 12i. Inside, 8i times that is plus 8i times 1. Your last, 8i times negative 4i is minus 32i squared. Okay? And what I said about i squared, that's the same thing as a negative 1. So negative 1 times 32 makes up a positive 32. And now I can simplify. So you have 2i, 3 plus 32 is 35. Negative 12i plus that is minus 4i, 8i, in parentheses. Okay? Now you can start to distribute. 2i times 35 is 70i. 2i times negative 4i is negative 8i squared. You got an i square there. That's a negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 8 makes that a positive 8. Now we write it to make it look pretty. 8 plus 70i. Okay. So there you have it. That's a simple. Just make sure you know that if you're adding or subtracting or multiplying. Look at your whole problem before you start and then strategize. All right. Next part is your quadratic formula. Make sure you memorize your quadratic formula. If you do not have it memorized, it might not help you. So if you here's the quadratic formula in case you forgot. X equals negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC, all of that over 2A. Now before you can use that formula, make sure you set everything equal to 0, and then recognize your A, B, and C. On number 11, <coughs> see how it's already set equal to 0? So your A is 6, B is negative 3, and your C is 8. And all you're going to do is plug into that quadratic formula that we had right over here. Okay? So R is equal to negative 3 plus or minus square root of negative 3 squared minus 4 times A times C, all of that over 2 times A. So I'm just plugging it that in. Okay. 
Now, the part you always want to do first in your calculator is you want to do the discriminant. And what is that discriminant? It is underneath the radical. Deal with that first. All right. So, type that in your calculator like you see it, and you end up with a, mark that off, negative 183. Okay? Well, you can't have a negative underneath the radical, so you've got to somehow move that out, and negative 1 is the same thing as an i, so I'm going to make this into an i square root of 183. Now, start in doing your tree, so you got 3 goes into 61, makes 183. Well, that's as prime as they're going to get, so I can't go any further, so I will leave it just like that. So we're going to rewrite. Negative times negative is positive plus or minus i square root of 183, all of that divided by 2 times 6, which is 12, okay? You can leave your answers like that, or you can separate them. Take a look. You got a 3, that's an understood 1, and a 12. Greatest common factor that goes into all of those is just a 1. So that will be your final answer, because you can't make it any smaller, okay? Number 12. Look at that problem first. Is it a range where it's equal to 0? Is it ax squared plus bx plus c? If the answer is yes, then you can start on your problem. So here we go. a is equal to 10, b is equal to 12, and c is equal to 3. Okay. Now let's plug it in. So you have m equal negative 12 plus or minus square root of 12 squared minus 4 times your a times your c, all of that over 2 times a. So let's go ahead and type that into the calculator, this part right here. And what did you end up with? We end up with square root of 24, okay? So 24 is not a perfect square, so let's start breaking those down. Let's start doing our tree. So you can do 4 and 6. 4 is a perfect square. 4 is a perfect square of 2, so I'm going to bring that out. 6 is just 3 and 2. It's not a perfect square. So this is what I'm going to write. Okay, so we're going to bring 6 going to stay home. So you have m equal negative 12 plus or minus 2 square root of 6, all of that over 20. Now, take a look at your numbers. You have dealt with the square root. We're not going to do anything with that anymore. We'll look at your real numbers right here. Okay? What do all those three have in common? What's the greatest number? If you don't know, look at 2. Does 2 go into 12? Yes. Does 2 go into 20? Yes. So start simplifying by dividing everything by 2. Just like that. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 20 divided by 2 is 10. So your final answer is negative 6 plus or minus square root of 6 over 10. Okay? All right. Number 13. This one is not a range where it is equal to 0, so you need to rearrange it. Try to keep your A positive. So if you need to draw a line to separate your left and your right, please do so. I'm going to move this 12 over, make it a positive. What you do to one side, you do to the other. And that makes that side 0, and that's what I want. Now I'm going to rewrite it where I have my quadratic term first. To b squared, my linear term is next, 12b, and then my constant, which is plus 6. That gives you 0. Now you have your a is 2, b is 12, c is 6, okay? Just like before, plug into your quadratic formula. So b is equal to negative 12 plus or minus square root of 12 squared minus 4 times a times c. All of that over 2 times a, which is 2 times 2. Plug that into your calculator as well, that part. And you end up with a square root of 
96. Okay? Factors of 96 is 16 and 6. 16 is a perfect square. If you're not sure, do you see how there's two alike? You can use that too. I got a pair that's going to come out. 6 is going to stay home. Okay? Rewrite it to make it easier. Negative 12 plus or minus 4 square root of 6. All of that divided by 4. Just like number 12, you need to go back and check this part first. What is the greatest common factor that goes into all of them? 4. So negative 12 divided by 4 leaves you negative 3. 4 divided by 4 leaves you 1. 4 divided by 4 leaves you 1. So your final answer is negative 3 plus or minus square root of 6, and you don't have to write it over 1, okay? Number 14, this one also is not set equal to 0. You notice your A is positive, so I'm going to move the 9 over. Plus 9, plus 9. That makes this side 0, okay? So now you have R squared plus 10R plus 9 is equal to 0. All right. What's your A? A is 1, B is 10, and C is 9. Plug it into that formula again. R equal negative 10 plus or minus square root of 10 squared minus 4 times A times C, all of that over 2 times A, which is 2 times 1, okay? All right. Now, when you plug this into your calculator, you got a square root of 64. Well, what's the square root of 64? That is 8. Anytime you have a whole number like that, you want to separate your solution when you get to the bottom. Your first answer will be negative 10 plus 8 divided by 2. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. Okay? Your second answer, negative 10 minus 8 divided by 2. That gives you negative 18 divided by 2, so the answer is negative 9. What does all this mean? This is where you're going to cross the x-axis if you were graphing a parabola. I hope this helps you. Study hard for your tests. Thank you.